In this lesson, we'll continue our review with Math Test 10, Section 4, Calculator Permitted. We're now on question 16. In 2015, the populations of city X and Y were equal. From 2010 to 2015, the population of city X increased by 20%, the population of city Y decreased by 10%. If the population of city X was 120,000 in 2010, what was the population of city Y in 2010. So there's a lot of information here. I would definitely recommend just sort of writing it out to uh, follow along. So we've got two different years here. We've got 2010 and 2015. And we're told that in 15, the populations of X and Y are the same. And we're also told from 2010 to 2015, so that's going this way, that the population of city X increased. So we don't know what this amount is in 2010, but we do know that in 2015, X increased by 20%, and the population of Y over that same period decreased by 10%. And so we're just given some percentages, but here now we're given a value. If the population of X was 120, in 2010 so now we have a value and we want to find the population of Y so there's really we're kind of doing this whole loop we're starting with 120 we're getting to 2015 and X we know X and Y are the same and then we're going backwards to get this value of X in 2010 so the first step 120,000 increased by 20% so you would just take and get in the habit when you're multiplying this out so this is going to be a hundred and twenty thousand. I think some students have a tendency to multiply this by 0.2 and then adding it. So get in the habit of just multiplying it by 1.2 because it's an increase. So one is the original amount plus the increase. And so, and you can use your calculator for this. So this is, um, it's going to be a twenty-four thousand dollar, twenty-four thousand people increase. So plus the two twenty it's gonna be 144. Again, just use your calculator. So, you know, it's kind of messy here. This is 144,000. And it's the same for X. So X is 144,000 in 2015. But here's where it's a little trickier because we have the, the result after the change. You can't just multiply this by 0.9. And if you follow these videos, I think it was just a couple of pages ago, it was look at number 12 for the same test. It was the same concept where percentage working backwards. But remember, if you have the ending result and you want to solve to get the original, the original is always 100%. It's always one. So after this change, 2015 for Y is now 90% because it decreased by 10. It's 0.9. We always divide. So the way you're going to do this is 144,000 divided by 0.9. If this confuses you, go back and see in the same test, look at number 12. It's the same concept. All right, so let's continue. We're going to go ahead and do number 16 now. Or no, that was 16. We're going to do number 17. Just go up a little bit. The volume of a sphere is given by the formula, and here's this, you should know this. This is beginning. This is given at the beginning of the section. You really should know this formula, where r is the radius of the sphere. Which of the following gives the radius of the sphere in terms of the volume? So we see this phrase a lot in terms of, whenever you see in terms of, whatever is to the left of the in terms of, you're isolating that variable. And so we're just isolating r. And if you look at the formula, it's r cubed. We don't want r cubed, we want just a single r. So this r, we want to just isolate it all. So the first step is I'll leave the r squared, but we've got the v on this side. So I'm going to multiply by 3 fourths to get rid of the 4 thirds. So we know that's going to be 3 fourths v, right? And the pi, to get rid of the pi, we're going to divide it. So the pi is going to be on the bottom, right? And so this is r squared, or r, sorry, r cubed. And now the last step is we just want to solve for r. So this r is going to be the cube root. So it's just knowing your concepts. And the answer here is d, right? It's the cube root 3. This v is really on the top, right, over 4 pi. So the answer is d. And let's take a look 
at number 18. The table shows the results of a survey in which the tablet users were asked how often they would watch video advertisements in order to access streaming content for free based on the table, which of the following is the closest to the probability that a tablet user answered always given the tablet user did not answer never. So this is a probability, but you want to be careful. We're not talking about all the probability. We just want the probability that a tablet user answer always. But you see this word given. We're not considering the whole population. Given that the tablet user did not answer never. So did not answer never is really we're only considering these percentages. Because if it's never, obviously that's not going to be any of these where it's going to be some indication of usage. So we're not counting that. So really we're down to, this adds up to 100%. We're down to about 70 or 60. We'll just call it 69, 68.7, I think. So we'll just call it 69%. So given that it's only those 69%, we want the probability of that of from that 69% of always. And so here is what we're looking for. We're just going to call that 31. So it's really 31 over 69. And I just kind of rounded because it's just the closest. And we're looking for about 45%. And let's look at the choices. Yes. So the answer here is C. We've got one more question on this page. It's number 19. In the equation above, A is a constant, and the graph of the equation x, y plane is a parabola. Which of the following is true about the parabola? You should recognize this form. All right? This is vertex form. Again, these are some concepts. They're just free points. If you recognize this for a parabola, you should in the standard form, the vertex form, the intercept form, and just to review vertex form. Or it could also be this equals it's sometimes there's an a right and then x minus h squared plus k where h and k that is the center of or the not the center i'm thinking of circle this is the um the vertex so it's either the minimum if it's an upward opening parabola or the maximum if it's a downward and this h it's the opposite sign. So x minus, if this were h, x minus 5 squared, it'd be positive 5. It's the opposite sign when it's, it's for this h or the x inside the brackets, and it's the same side for the k. Sometimes there's an a. Um, you really want to pay attention to the sign of that a because that's going to determine whether it opens upward or downward. And so here, we are, the a is really 1. We don't have any value, but we see a negative, so that's like negative 1. So we know it opens down. And the parabola, the vertex, here's the h, which is the x. It's negative 3, so the vertex we know is going to be positive 3. And it's going to be positive a. All right? So it's a downward opening parabola. And that means this vertex is going to be the highest point on the parabola. So the maximum value of the parabola is going to occur at 3a. So the answer here is D.